Hi, crazy friends. <laughs> Come on in. Uh, welcome <laughs> to a little Friday fun. Okay, I'll do an intro in about 30 seconds. If you're watching this on the replay, feel free to fast forward just a little bit. Um, it's, we're going to have a fun play with the Watercolor World uh, stamp set. I have some really fun ideas and some cute projects to share with you. Well, a cute project, but other ideas. All right. Just a couple more minutes. I hope you're here. Um, I hope you're getting a little alert on your phone or your computer. So you should definitely subscribe and follow and hit notifications, whatever it is you need to do so that you can get those little alerts. All right, you ready? Hi, crafty friends. It's Audra Monk, the crafty yogi. I know, welcome to the crafty corner and a little Friday night crafting. Um, Friday fun, whatever you want to call it. So let me double check the date. So today is Friday, March 10th, 2023. So that would pertain, oh, I'm going to have to run into the side a second, to uh, the information about my coming classes and to the availability of this stamp set. It will only be available through the end of April, 2023. So if it's after April. The technique though, you could use this technique with, you know what, and I'll show you with a different stamp set because I, I got some ideas. Okay, so Come on in, say hello. I want to grab one more thing. Two more things. Two more things. Yes, you get to just look at, hopefully the shelves aren't too dirty behind me. Two more things, because I want to show you how you could use this. Oh my gosh, this is so funny that I just thought of this. With a, this, this uh, technique with a different stamp set. Okay, and I'm going to use it with a retired stamp set, but you might have something similar. Um, and we might have other things. And, and maybe if people come on, they might think when I start showing this technique of other things that you could, um, other stamp sets this would be good with. Okay, so, oh, hey, Jean. All right, so I know I'm working now. All right, so let's show you the desk. And then let me hop on here with the desk. Okay, I know it's a little messy. Look, Mondays, hopefully, everybody cross your fingers that I can do a Monday Live on Monday. Um, this is a clue about what we'll be doing. Um, so yeah. Okay. So let me, you know what, let me tell you really fast about my upcoming Just Cards class so that you can get your um, RCPs in for this. Hey, Lori, welcome. So my Just Cards class is always, um, there's three designs. You get six cards. You could get two of each. Um, definitely the colors may vary because you might have like this square could be this color or vice versa. You will get, um, they're all going to be beautiful. Um, and same thing like this one, the papers might vary a little bit. So there's a masculine card. There's one that could be great for babies or Easter. And then a fun, um, I did as congratulations. Um, I had a request for a wedding card, but it could also, you could put happy birthday on there. And um, I will show you in the video how you can cut your rectangles in half and make this. I already did a video on it too, but all my to-go classes include a video tutorial. When you come in person, of course, I help you in person. And I have uh, kits available and spaces for in person. Okay, so there's that. All right, next. Here we go. You ready to see? This is what we're going to make. Isn't that pretty? So um, I've been talking about it a little bit, but I am training to be a travel agent. I'm ready to book your things, but oh my gosh. It is way more than just making super cute projects and knowing how to order them. Um, I, my head is about ready to explode. Um, anyhow, I was like, dude, I need some travel decorations. And look at that. So we have this super awesome set called Watercolor World. And I was wondering, I know I stamped it once a little while ago. And I don't know where the piece is that I stamped. I can't find it. So I'm going to talk to you all about this. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks, and we're going to try some different things. But I will definitely show you how to make this project. Um, so you don't have to write travel. You could write anything you want. on. Although travel goes with it. Um, and a lot of us like to travel. You don't have to be a travel agent to like to travel. Um, so anyway, I thought it was fun. And I showed it to my husband, and I always like it when I show him a project, and he's like, oh, I really like that. Because, you know, sometimes I think he's like, oh, that's interesting. So anyhow, that's what we're going to make. Okay, so... I recommend using a Stamparatus. Now, these big stamps, so it's right there, they do fit on, hold on, let me show you. So if you don't have one and you're ordering this, and this is available in the catalog through April, and as far as I know, it's not backward or anything, but you need one of these big blocks. And what, hold on, let's see, they have, um, it's an F block, an F block. 
Hey, Michelle. So you need one of these big blocks or you need your stamparatus. I like it in the stamparatus because that big block is, is very hard to hold. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, can I fit all this stuff on here? Okay. Am I crooked? No, I gotta move that all the way out of the way. All right, so we're gonna talk about different ways to ink up this stamparatus. <laughs> to ink up this, um, so yeah, the stamparatus. Ink up this stamp. Okay, one thing I recommend when you're cleaning stamps on your stamparatus is to, ooh, are we wet? I'm a little bit wet. Use your chamois, because see how I can take it out and just do that versus putting it on my stamp and scrub. So I use my chamois. You could also use a wipe. Um, but uh, that's my recommendation on that. Okay, so first up, we're just gonna stamp it on regular paper with regular ink so you can see what it looks like because it is called Watercolor World. So it already watercolors. Okay, now where do I need to put these? Uh-oh, that one's starting to come off. These magnets, remember, they are very, very strong. Oops, hold on. So it looks like I should put it down here. So you wanna... Um, be careful with them. You don't want them to touch each other. Okay. My one friend used to say, and back when we all first got this, she said um, it was like um, teenagers dating these magnets. You don't want them to get too close. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. Hey, Pam. Welcome. Okay. So plain ink, plain paper, nothing extra for the first go. What color should I stamp it? I think I, I feel like I got a, it's the world. Well, you could stamp it in green, right? Cause it's the world. Um, or you could stamp it in purple. I mean, you can stamp it anywhere. You know what, so I'm gonna go Coastal Cabana. I don't know, I'm just feeling Coastal Cabana. Is anyone excited to uh, learn, especially demos that are watching, to learn about the color refresh we have coming? So for anyone who doesn't know, whether you're a demo or a customer, um, about every five years and I am I've just celebrated 10 years of stamping up and this would be my third color refresh so it's about every five years because they did it right when I joined um, so what they do is some colors go away some old colors come back some new colors I think the new colors would only go to the new in colors but um it's kind of fun though okay plain oh sorry about that did you see that focus hey Kathy so plain ink plain paper nothing fancy this is what you'll get and it's actually beautiful all by itself it really is it's such a pretty stamp I'll keep this one forever I keep all my travel things which I'm very happy of now look at that look at that how pretty that is okay you're like show me closer Audra I know you're saying that look at that so it has built-in darks and lights so it already looks watercolored. So we could just cut this down more. I'm using four by six just to make sure I get the whole thing and it's pretty easy. We could use it like this, no problem. Okay, now to show you how to use it. So those that just got here, this is the project we're gonna make. Um, I don't know, it's my little rainbow world with a little, little watercolor E. I don't know if that's really a way to make that an adjective, but um, it is. Okay, so. First, we should clean it. That would be important. So let's go back to the clean it. So I'm going to make this one, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna try uh, some different colors. So it doesn't have to. I I like rainbows. Um, so I thought that would be really pretty. But you could make it match the decor of the room you want it in, or if you're using it in a scrapbook page or giving it to a friend, you could. Um, Let's try this off just a little bit, although it doesn't matter because I'm going to get it wet, I think. You could use any colors you want. Okay, so here's the things you need to know. When you're coloring your stamps, you want stamp and write markers. You do not want stamp and blends, okay? Because stamp and blends are permanent. It wouldn't hurt it, but it's going to stay on there and the ink is not going to come off on your paper. This is where you need different markers. Um, if you don't have stamp and write markers, you need some kind of, like a Crayola marker. A water-based marker is what you need. And then you also need your spritzer or some kind of spray bottle with just water. Um, I know you can probably do like alcohol thing and other things, but I just use water, so that's what I'm gonna show you. I think if you add a little alcohol in there, I think it dries a little bit faster. Okay, so I'm gonna do a rainbow like I did. So I'm gonna try to do it just the same way first. So red, orange, I'm using pale papaya. 
And then yellow, I'm using So Saffron. Oh, my red, I picked Sweet Sorbet, which is a current in color. Red, orange, yellow, green. Um, Parakeet Party. Blue. Uh, Tahitian Tide. Oh, I don't need this pink one. I don't know why there's pink one in my pile. And I don't need this one either. And then I'm going to use the Orchid Oasis. So I was going kind of more for like a pastel-y kind of look. Um, so that's that. And then, so on this first one, because I'm showing you now how I made it for my project, I'm going to use our shimmery white, which is not quite as white as our basic white. It, can you see the sparkles on there? Yeah, it has a little bit of sparkle, but it's a little thicker, and it does work well with getting wet. Okay, so here we go. We're going to color. You need the brush side. You know what? I'm going to make my rainbow go from the other side because it doesn't matter, does it? All right, so I'm going to do that. That's going to be a little crazy. So I just take it, and I want to make sure, okay, you can see that. And you just brush it on the stamp. And I'm going to just do red. And I think I might go like this, like kind of diagonal on this one. I have, you know, that's where the art fun comes in. You just kind of make it your own way. Okay, so that's red. And then the orange. Now these lighter colors, I try a little bit not to get them into the red because it'll get a little red on my marker. It'll come off, but, or you can, you know, get it off. Okay, red, orange. All right, yellow. So I'm just laying the color down, trying to be generous with the color. Oops. And I was you see me coloring all a little bit wonky, but so I can use the side of it. Yellow. Okay, I'm about halfway. Kathy, I love using markers on stamps, especially red rubber. Kathy's saying that she often forgets. Did I just color red, orange? No, okay. I was like, did I color on the yellow? Do I have to start over? Um, I love coloring images like of cute animals that are filled in with the markers. I find it kind of soothing. Okay, green, blue, and then at the end of this video, I will show you, this is really cool, the, um, the travel agency that I work with now is called Pineapple Escapes, and you know we had a big pineapple stamp, and I kept it, because, well, I love pineapples, which is <laughs> interesting, that, um, but um, I'll show you the same technique really fast at the very end on a different stamp. So you can see that it's fun, even if it's not a world. And if you think of stamps that we have that this idea would be really fun with, definitely post them in the comments. Okay, so I put the ink on there. Just gonna move them out of the way. All right, spritzer. Now I'm using, on this first one, the shimmer paper, so I don't need a ton. Oh, I guess I should put the paper on. All right, so um, I drew little lines in the corners. You can see that. You'd think in videos I'd be like, oh, get new grid papers out, but today that did not happen. And I hope that I'm putting these in the same spot because once this is wet, I don't want a lollygag on the flip over because the ink will start to run. Okay, just water. All right, so that was four sprays. Let's hope I got it nicely. And then I put it on here. And I'm gonna hold it gentle. I'm just gonna hold it for a second. Okay, and then I'm gonna take it off. Oh, look at that, yay, it's so pretty. Now, some of the places that are super wet, what I like to do is I just take a regular paper towel and I, I did pretty good. This doesn't have very many that are super wet. And I dab up a little. You know what, I swear that's the only one I need to dab. That is it. Well, maybe this one. What is that? So let's see. This is New Zealand. Oh no, this is Australia. That's New Zealand right there. Okay. We think we should all have our like geography test. And then you could use your heat tool to lightly dry it, or I'm gonna just set it aside and we're gonna experiment for a little bit, and then it'll be dry, or we'll add the heat tool at the end. But look how pretty that is. This, oh, so you didn't even see my big face was in front of New Zealand. This is New Zealand. I'm pretty sure, and that is Australia. And what do we got? We got Africa, South America, North America, Canada is in North America. We got Europe over there, Russia, Asia. Well, I guess Russia's not a country anymore, right? Is it just Asia, China, I don't know. 
Greenland. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that dry and we're gonna wipe this down. And now we're gonna do like a totally different color scheme. Cause I just, and I'm also gonna do it on uh, watercolor paper. Cause I want you to see what that looks like. Cause you might be like, oh, I wanna do it on, I really wanna go crazy. So, um, all right. So I did not decide what color scheme I wanted. Now you could also do this watercolor, um, more make it more watercolory by spraying your regular, like put your ink pad on there and then spray it. That would be totally cool if you just want it to be one color. Oh, I have an idea. Okay, I have an idea. Now, who knows, this could epically fail. Just so you know that whenever I say, ooh, I have an idea, I haven't tried it before. Okay, so we're here. I'm thinking, so my mother-in-law um, just moved and she has traveled a lot and she, her um, house or apartment now, um, she kind of does like a, a travel theme and she has this big map on her wall. And it's, now this is, ooh, you could add gold. Okay, I'm not gonna do it right now. That is on my list for the weekend, maybe. But um, she likes burgundies and browns and those earth tones. So what I was thinking we would do is what if we took some Mary Merlot, I think Cajun Craze, I think those two. Because I don't think I want regular red. Okay, and then maybe some early espresso for the edges. Okay, so who knows what this is gonna be like. If it's epic, if it's epic fail, just fast forward. I'm sure I'll recover. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the lightest color, this Cajun Craze, and I'm gonna ink it up first. Now, could I do this with my markers? 100%. But I thought, what if I, and you could also use sponge daubers, which is what we're gonna use in a second. Okay, so there I've got my Cajun Craze. It's kind of a dark orangey color. It's one of my favorite colors. Okay, do I have sponge daubers that are clean? We'll use that one in the brown. So you can wash these in case you don't know. Sponge daubers. Okay, that one looks good. You can wash them. I put them in a little bag like you get for um, cake decorating tips. And I uh, wash them in the dishwasher. Okay, so Mary Merlot is like, it's a dark red color like wine. Um, so I'm going to do the edges of all my countries. And I'm gonna kind of go in a decent amount. Like, so not just the edge, because I'm gonna add the brown. I really hope this works. In my brain, this is like a great idea. If you've already done this and you know it works, <laughs> thank you, you feel free to tell me. But I think that this will be really cool. So all of the edges, inner edges, outer edges, and I don't even know where I started. I guess you should pay attention to that. All right. We're gonna hope that that's good. And now, and look at me, I'm being good. I'm closing up my ink pads. Let's get our early espresso. Let me get this other sponge dropper. And now I'm only gonna do the outer edges. Okay. So a little more of the antique -y look. I think this stamp would be super cool. Stamped on, uh, paper that you did like a uh, ink wash on it or um, maybe just on crumb cake paper and stamp it in brown and get like you know like a pirate map kind of feel or like old library map kind of feel I don't know so I think you could go fun and flirty <laughs> that's so funny you can go fun and flirty with your watercolor world map or you can go classic an antique -y or pirate style. Hey, Cynthia Ford from Indianapolis. Oh, I used to go that way all the time. My son went to IU for his undergrad and we used to drive out there a decent amount. I like Bloomington. Indianapolis is kind of pretty too. Okay, we're gonna go that that's good. Oh my gosh, I'm like super excited. Okay. So now, I, maybe I shouldn't be super excited. I'm gonna do watercolor paper. So we sell a watercolor paper. Um, you just have to cut it down. It comes in a smaller sheet. Um, I forget exactly what size it comes as. Okay, and where was I putting that? I think I was putting that there. Let's check it out, make sure. Well, there's no water on it. Okay, now I'm gonna spray, since this is watercolor paper, you know what? I feel like, do I have a water? 
And that doesn't have any water in it. Do I have any water here? Can I like, <laughs> can I like legit um, um, take my water? Other than my daughter's in Texas. I'm going to take my water. I will wash it before I use it again. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking, Cynthia. The tea stain paper. Okay, I'm totally putting my water painter in my cup. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Because what I think I'm going to do is put some water on here first. Did I get it wet? Let's get it wetter. This is what you do. You sacrifice for your crafty fun. But I think the watercolor paper, we can make it wetter. And I'm not an expert on this in any way. Just in case you're like, oh my gosh, that lady knows everything. I really don't. I don't like these messy things. I like clean, simple stamping. But every once in a while, I feel called to do something a little crazy. Okay, now we're going to spray it. Okay. Now I went a little crazy. Are you ready? <sighs> Breathe. Okay. Let's see if we're making the world. Are we making a cute little antique world or are we making just a big pile of mud? I'm afraid. We did make an antique world. Okay, now this is where, because I went a little crazy, I'm going to just dab some of it up with my paper towel. If you get your heat tool, you can like blow it around, but I don't want it to be too streaky because I still want it to look like the shape of the countries. Although that's kind of cool up here. Can you see up there? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. Where it's like going, and it's turning green. That's really interesting. Okay, let's get this one. Whatever little country that is. All right, I don't know why it's turning green up there, but let me show it to you. Ta-da! So we got some wet spots, but we're gonna let it sit, and then I'll hit it with a heat tool after. And we'll, it's not as, ooh. I'm intrigued. It's not as um, brown as I would like it to be. So what if, what if, put these back on. I mean, if I mess it up, right? It's just a piece of paper. Um, and I mean, I get mad at myself just like anybody else, but I do try to, you know, I don't want to dab the whole thing. Give me, I got more paper towels. That like, you know, it's okay to mess up. It really is. Okay, so I'm just going to dab off some of that water. And I'm going to add, okay, let's throw the, these two in the trash. We're going to do it one more time. And hopefully I got it in general in the same spot. There's the problem that I maybe didn't get it in the same spot. <laughs> oh, good. People are liking it. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the early espresso again. And I'm going to do these edges more vigorously. It's so funny. I really shouldn't be doing this. I'm like, I'm going to show them how to make this project. And then I'm like, I had cut extra paper so I could fiddle around with it if we wanted to. Get this part in the middle there. Okay. So now I'm wondering, should we spray that? You know, I'm going to just very lightly spray it. Like one spritz. The farther away your spritzer is, the less water. Ooh, did I get those other ones wet? Um, these were in the way of, look, they have a little antique speckles on them now. Can you see them? No, they were in the way. I should have moved them out of the way. All right, ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm gonna move it over so you can see it. One, two, three. I like it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay. Look at this. I'm going to show it to you up close. Look at it. All right. That feels, I almost feel, um, I don't know if you've done any of our Maker Mojo events and be prepared. I'm going to be like, hawk, um, what do you call it? Advertising it, talking about the upcoming April one um, a lot in the next uh, six weeks. We just had our first planning meeting for this one. Um, Melissa loves making watercolor things. She likes doing really cool, messy projects. And I don't normally. <laughs> oh, good. Jean loves it when I go rogue. I love this. The only thing that makes me sad is this weird green stuff up here. But I'm going to cut that off. And that this part is a little, I don't know, it floofed out a little bit more. But that is super cool. Okay, if you make something like this, you got to show me. 
All right, let's put the project together and then at the very end, um, I will show you the same technique using a different stamp set like super fast. What are we, 25 minutes? Okay, we'll have time. This should, I normally like to keep these videos about 30 minutes and I think we'll be at 40 minutes, so it'll be okay. So if you don't need to see how to put the project together, feel free to fast forward to the end and we'll see if I did it. So this is what we're gonna make, all right? So we already, let me move my antique world away. We already made our piece and it feels pretty dry. It has new fancy speckles now from when, <laughs> from making the last project. Okay, so what is this? This is a piece of paper, shimmery white paper, cut four by six. I'm gonna now just cut it at two inches for each of them. Now, could you just put it on like this? You could, but I think having those little bit of lines in between, I just like the way that looks. In most cases, I'm like, take the DSP and just cut it a little bit. Now, could you cut them like wider, less wide, less wide? You could, you could. Hey, Carlin, hello. Um, you could cut it that way, but I'm gonna go even, Steven, and cut these at two inches. And you're gonna laugh. When I was putting um, it together, did I make this yesterday? I think I made it yesterday. Um, for a second, I almost put the pieces of the world together wrong. Okay, so those are those three pieces. Hold on, I have a post-it note. And someone, make sure to remind me at the end, say, Audra, don't drink the end of your water. Get a new water. Okay, so here are the measurements. Four by six is my shimmery. Then I have a piece of black at four and an eighth by six and a quarter. I decided in this one, I used the purpley color. Can you see that under there? Oh, you know what, let me take it out. Then you could see it. And I decided um, to change this one up. Okay, so this is just a five by seven, um, what do you call this, shadow box frame from Michael's Craft Store. Um, I think they come in, when I buy them, they're in a three pack or something. So they're a little bit cheaper. Depending, sometimes they're more plasticky. They're they're plastic, but sometimes they're more than others. This one is a little sturdier. This is an older one. I think they, you know, how a lot of the manufacturers went to making them thinner, so it might be thin. Okay, so what I'm talking about is, see, I used that orchid oasis color, and this time I decided to try it out with the pale papaya, just just to see it out. So what it is is, um, oh yeah, you can see that. Foam strips are my favorite. You can use uh, regular dimensionals, but I'll show you why I like foam strips. One, because they're thicker. So since it's a shadow box frame, I can pop everything up that I want. Okay, so I don't have my foam strips, but now I do. Uh, the foam strips come in a long piece. I always cut them in half. It just is more manageable to me. Okay, so where are my pieces? Oh, here they are. All right, so take your pieces and flip them over and then Oh, you've been looking for these, Cynthia. Yeah, this is the five by seven little shadow box frames. And they cut, like I said, I get them in a three pack. I, and it does not say on here what the brand is. Um, but I do like them. And yeah, they're, they, like I said, this one feels better. I think the newer ones feel a little cheaper. But once you hang it on your wall, you, you can't tell. Or you put it on your shelf. Yeah, so um, for my travel business, I've been doing a lot of studying and a lot of learning, a lot of frustrating, is that a word? A lot of frustrating at a computer. Um, so I'm going to make an office up. Um, our kids are all adults. Um, our youngest is 24 and he's living at home because he's in grad school. And our medium son is, he just had a birthday. How old is he? He is 27 and he lives about, well, three to four hours away, depending on what time of day it is. He lives down near Virginia Beach area. And um, so anyway, his room is like one of our guest rooms. I mean, it's his when he comes home. Uh, so anyway, but there's a desk in there. So I'm going to make that be my office. 
And eventually I think I'm going to have to move around some bookshelves and stuff. But anyway, so uh, the whole point of this was I was like, oh, well, now I'll have a wall in front of a desk instead of like right now I'm sitting at the kitchen table because I have a big table. And I was like, I need to make some cute home decor for my office. So that's where I think having, you know, the craft hobby can benefit any of your other daily life things. You like how official this is that I'm putting these on here. Hey, Ian. <laughs> oh, Cynthia says that she has small, medium, and large size daughters. It's so funny. I, I don't know why I say medium. He's the one in the middle because we have a daughter that the one that <laughs> is at, in Texas, and she's actually coming home where she's going to graduate with her PhD finally this summer. But her lease is up. You're finding out all about my kids now while we do the fun um, attached adhesives. Uh, she's going to earn her PhD this summer. It has been a very long seven years. COVID did not help. Um, it slowed her down a little bit. Um, but anyway, we're going to have to move her home for a little bit until she finds out where her, her first job is going to be. And then put pieces in the middle. I mean, not that anyone's touching it, but you don't want it to sag. So put some, and I always just kind of do this, like diagonal. And uh, you get a lot of these in the pack. And like I said, they're double the length that I'm showing you because I always cut mine down. Okay, so we have three of those. Now, we get our piece of paper and we're gonna double check that Audra actually cut it to the right size. Look at that, I'm gonna put the world together the proper way. Well, who knows? Yay, I did. Okay, so this black piece is four and an eighth by six and a quarter. So what I like to do is you do one end. Okay, so this is the fun part. So <laughs> like what else can I tell you while I um, put this stuff on? Oops, did I get? No, I see that I did not get that all off. All right, so and if you came in late, um, I did share the Just Cards class coming up. In, I think it's like in two weeks. So you can RSVP if you want a kit. I do to-go kits, which include a video tutorial and all the stuff cut and ready. You just need to add your stamps, right? Your stamps and ink and your adhesive to make the projects. And I do have spaces um, in the in-person too. Okay, so if you live near Frederick, Maryland, or you just, well, you, it would not be a good one to do a field trip too because it's on a Thursday night at seven okay that one goes on and I will just warn you if you mess these up right if you put it on crooked or you put it on the wrong way and you push it down like I just did you cannot get them up ask me how I know you could maybe try the whole spatula little you know with your uh, take a pick tool and everything um, but I had to throw one away yesterday so like I said it's paper and yes it's annoying if you have to start all the way over um, I don't know, you could probably get, maybe you could get clever and cut it apart and reuse the pieces. But yeah, I had one go into the trash yesterday. Okay, so let's see. Oh, you know, you could use full adhesive sheets, Jean. That would work. You could cut them out in like um, rectangles. I didn't even think about those. Because I've been using these foam strips for so long for these because I like how thick they are, but I'm pretty sure the adhesive sheets, okay, just in case people don't know what that is, I will show you because I told, see this is why these lives are kind of fun sometimes. So these are our foam adhesive sheets. They're not quite as thick, but they would totally work. So you could just cut them and put like, I would just put a rectangle on there, maybe. Well, there you go. But alas, you're gonna see me take all these off if you're watching on the replay just fast forward whenever you need to I will not be offended if you're here with me live <laughs> this is part of the entertainment that you did not pay for <laughs> and it's free free entertainment and then there's a project at the end usually sometimes there isn't even a project at the end sometimes there's just pieces but I wanted to share this because I think a lot of people like to travel or like to have world decor. Look at that. That's not bad. I will take it. Okay, so then um, 
it looks like I just put the black. I only did it yesterday and you think I can't remember. So I am going to put this on here. Ooh, I like it with the peach. Okay, so this one I'm just going to use glue. Now, you could you do another layer? Oh my goodness, yes, you could. 100% you could do because it'll fit in that frame. If you get the shadow box frame, you can pop things up to your heart's desire. But keep things simple and easy. I'm going to just do that. Okay, I'll get them on tippy toes here and lean over. So I did a bigger border, which actually I did not do quite as big on there, but I wanted to be able, I was like, I want to see the color more. Okay, you know what? Let's do these uh, adhesive sheets this time. All right, so look at that. I don't know why I cut it. I just felt like you should cut it. It'll be easier. Where's the other one? One of them went flying. Okay, let's do two more. Whoa. It's a good thing nobody can see the back of the project, right? Ah. All right, and then I'm just going to put one in the middle. So use whatever pop-up. It's so funny, I always just called them dimensionals, but a lot of people I know call them like pop dots. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, you know, the stampin' things. Oh, look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay. So now I'm gonna have two of these. I'll have to figure out which one I like the best. All right, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna send it, one of these to my friend. All right, and then center that the best you can. All right, and then I did for the Magic of TV. All right, so I use, now we have a lot of different letters. So actually, let me show you this. Um, let's see if I have them close by. No. Ah, uh, okay, I don't know where they are. I looked at them. The new letters, I felt were too big for this project because they're taller. We do have old retired ones that are little. I think those would look nice. But I used, this is current. It's in the annual catalog. It might be on back order though. Um, there's a little punch. Um, although you could just stamp the words and in one piece and, and emboss it and cut it out. Um, but I went ahead. I thought it kind of was fun with the whole travel theme that it was like tickets. Um, so whenever I'm embossing, this is my other tip I always share. When you're embossing, um, like, I'll show you. And then I always just tuck them away. Make double, make two, make three, and just tuck it. Like if it's a happy birthday or a hello. Do I have any here? I'm just looking. And then I'll just do the extra one and, and put it off in my bin because sometimes you'll need an extra one and it's ready for you when you're making something quick. Okay. All right, are you ready? How are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing good. So I actually made three, three sets of these. So, and it can go anywhere. You could put it across the top. I did over here because there's a lot of white space, but I also feel like you could do, let's see. And then um, I use black dimensionals on these. So let's just go ahead and put them on. I should have pre-dimensioned them. T-R-A, so the problem is I gotta make sure I get the right letters, right? Because I have traveled here twice. I don't want to say some other word. Now, could you do someone's name? Could you do a place? Like, maybe this is a commemoration of a place, like Paris or England or, you know, something. T-R. But um, you could also, you can write anything you want. I don't know. The world. Um, you could look in your old stamps. You might have something else that would go nicely. You need an E. Oh my goodness, I should have done this part before and I should have only had one. Okay, so let's check. Can Audra spell travel? V 
D-E-T-R-A-V-E-L. Yes, Audra can spell travel. Oh, thank you, Tina. I'm glad you like this project. Okay, those are for later. All right, so let's see what it looks like over here. Now, it's a little annoying that travel has six letters. I think it would be way better if, so what I'm doing is putting one across the border. It would be way more fun if it was a five-letter word or seven because, um, oh, look at that. So if I put them here, though, it covers up all of Australia. So is that a problem? Well, I don't know. I haven't been to Australia. But, so we're going to do it over here. That's why I think I must have done it over here. Because this way it only covers up the very end of South America and the very end of Africa. Okay, now you're like, how do I get those straight? Straight-ish. Straight-ish, right? You take your ruler or something that is um, straight. You use your grid paper. Okay, so line your grid paper up. And then about as high as you want it, I'm going to keep it, oh, I did it pretty high up there. I'm kind of feeling like I don't want it that high. All right, so see I'm using, whoa, but don't move your paper. I'm going to use that line and that line. And then I'm going to slide it down. This is so hard for me. I'm not good with this delicate stuff. My fingers get all shaky. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this A on first. Ooh, Anne says, what about vertically? I just happened to look up. You could also put it at the top. So it is too big vertically, I think. Nope, I like it better across. So I'm going to go with the across, but I think you could do it, or I don't know, you could have fun. It's a craft project, right? So everybody can make it their own way. Yay, Jean says she's going to try this because she has these stamps. Oh, that makes me super excited. So I will post a picture of this tomorrow morning. And um, you are welcome to share it there if you want to share your picture in the comments. Or um, if you use Instagram, you can tag me or, you know, you can also just email me if you want to show me what you made. I think it's really fun that we can inspire each other. And I love that about the crafting world. It was a great idea, Anne. I also think if you stamped it not punching out the little pieces, obviously you can make the word um, smaller. And so this is um, stamped in Versamark and then embossed in white embossing powder. Um, could you do it in the um, shimmery white and stamp it in black yeah i think you could do that too or stamp it in colors if you wanted to have fun all right they're on there Ta-da! look how cute that is and i really don't think it needs anything else like i thought oh could i put some embellishments you know i love a couple little matte black dots could i put two in one maybe if i put them around hold on these are my most favorite, still my most favorite. My second most favorite now is classic matte dots because they are the same. Uh, it's a little bit different shape, but they come in black, gray, vanilla, and white. Um, I kind of feel like I could put some. Let's see. Hold on. I think there's a few in this one. There we go. But if I put it around the word, like I feel like if I put one there. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, don't put it in the crack. It that didn't work. Okay. And then come here, little guy. And you know you can talk to these like they're your friends. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use that one so I don't have just that stray one. Okay, that's kind of cute. Look at that. Okay, so you can add a little bit. I was wondering. I was like, can I add embellishments? And then let me show you really fast what it looks like when you put it in the frame, because that ups. Oh, so pretty. That ups your, your like, cool quotient. Quote, quote. Ta-da! There we go. Look how pretty that is. Look at that. Okay, so oh, we're at 44 minutes. All right. Um, 
Ooh, that's a cool idea. Jean, so what if you put dots on the capitals or, you know, but now remember, it's not a very big image, so you might not want to add too many things. Um, okay, so really fast. Right, oh, I'm just going, no, you know, I'm going to move that out of the way because I'm going to get things wet. Really fast. Look at that. Oh, they're so cute. Um, let's, let me show you that it doesn't have to, ooh, I almost dropped my trimmer. And let me show you this. Look at that. That has dried nicely. It looks so antique -y. So my thought too is what if you stamped it with verse, no, not verse mark. You put, somehow you'd have to put glue and you could put gold. Um, you could either emboss or use that, uh, whatever that, the gold leafing. I don't know. I have a couple ideas to make antique but that looks really cute. Okay, so here's this old, this is so fun, because um, Pineapple Escapes is the travel agency I work for. This is an old pineapple stamp. I am so excited to make, um, I kept it because I love pineapples, and I love that they mean welcome, and I forget which culture it is. Um, but we can do this one. Let me get some yellows, yellow markers. Okay, crushed curry. And then we need green. What is this? Old olive? That sounds good. I'm going to get a couple colors. I'm going to do, I think garden green is close. And then we have our, we need some brown. What color brown? Uh, soft suede. Okay, so we're going to color this really fast and we're going to ink it. So actually, I'm going to do the light color first. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a big stamp to do this, all these techniques with. You could do this with smaller stamps, but I kind of feel like you get a big wow with your big stamp. All right, so this is what I did to that earth way at the beginning. So if you missed that, I just colored it in the rainbow colors. And then we inked it in the, the orangey colors. That, I'm going to try that out. So again, I have no idea what this is going to look like. I haven't used this stamp, but we made a really cute project with this stamp a long time ago in a class. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to color it all yellow. Now, this one is on a wood, so you can't put it on your stamp redis. I know there's ways to remove them, but I just think it's so cute that I just am going to keep it like this. So the whole doing something again would not work. And then we're going to take this brown and we're going to do the edge maybe not all of it but parts of it and then we're going to do a couple of these little nooks does anyone else like pineapples i eat pineapple every week pineapples and grapefruits right now okay now we need a piece of paper do i have another piece of shimmery white nope but i've got a piece of watercolor now you could just stamp it like this. Actually, let's just show you that. Oh my gosh. This is like apparently an hour long video now. So you could just stamp it. And you gotta push it down a little bit. I don't know that you need to push it that hard. And you could get a cute little pineapple like that. All right, we're gonna do this lickety split and then we're gonna put it on here. We're gonna add water. Okay, I'm just gonna color the yellow. This is a crushed curry, I think. And we're just gonna leave whatever was there, there. You know what, I'm just gonna do this, the garden green. Nothing sadder though than when you go to cut your pineapple open and it's mostly rotten inside. Okay, we got green leaves. All right, now we're gonna get our spritzer. We're gonna be generous spritzing because I got watercolor paper. So usually you should have a paper towel down. <laughs> this grid paper will go in the trash. Okay, and that can go out of the way. All right, you ready? Watercolor paper. Super watercolory inked up stamp. Push it down. Give it time. So one thing that helps when you're using watercolor paper is you need to give it time. Oh, my shoulders were like all the way up here. You need to give it time for the water and the ink to soak into the paper. Okay, ready? I'm gonna lift it straight up. Oh, it's so cute. Look at it. It is so cute. And I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna let that dry. 
I'm not going to touch it. And I'm going to let those blobbies dry. Yes, Jean, I totally thought you could use your stamp a jig I think I kept one. So then you could re-stamp it. That's like old school, right? Um, but yes. So you can use this technique of using your stamp and your markers and your water to make really fun things. Um, where's our, our world? Because we made a world. Look at this. Where's my other world? We made a world. All right. So if you have questions, comments, requests, uh, definitely put them. If you watch this on YouTube, um, I will not be able to see the comments again that you made live because it's super hard. To, I have to watch the whole video to see them. So if you really have a question, definitely, of course, you can always email me, audremonk at yahoo.com, or you can um, go to the video once it's there and put it in the main comments after the video. So if you do have questions, comments, requests, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed all of this uh, fun stuff this all this fun stuff um if you don't have a demo and you need to order audremonk.stampinup.net if you ever want to join my team I'm totally here for you um if you want to travel i'm also now here for you for that too so uh 